One of the biggest problems, challenges facing New York City from a wastewater perspective is the removal of nitrogen. You know, we are surrounded by very sensitive water bodies like uh, the Long Island Sound, Jamaica Bay, and New York Harbor, where the, the levels of nitrogen are actually regulated. And so the New York City wastewater plants, many of them have to remove nitrogen down to very, very low levels. And uh, so where we come in is we, we work with the city of New York in uh, designing operating and optimizing wastewater, biological wastewater treatment processes so as to remove the nitrogen but do so in a very sustainable manner, in a cost efficient manner and energy efficient manner. Where we are, we have all sorts of tools to answer the most intricate questions, the most fundamental questions but also very applied questions. My lab, uh, we do a lot of fundamental work. We go down to the gene level and protein level mechanisms of nitrous oxide emissions. But at the same time, we have students who design these processes and actually see them being implemented at full scale. Uh, all these processes, all these technologies, we are able to inspect at the microbial level and thus optimize these processes. We take bacteria and then we crack open the cells and we look at the DNA to understand who's there. We look at the messenger RNA to understand what they are doing. We'll also look at the protein to see which pathways they are expressing. Once we have a handle at these levels of information, this basically enables us to optimize the process. So we need really fundamental genetics, genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics information to design and optimize bioreactor level processes, and that's what we are engaged in. Until two years ago when we started the project, there was no single protocol that, would enable, that could uh, help us to consistently measure these emissions. So that was one of the biggest challenges. But as with everything, we, we have overcome this. We wrote the first ever protocol for uh, measuring nitrous oxide from wastewater treatment facilities. It was reviewed by the EPA, and this is the protocol which has been now implemented around the country. It all revolves around nitrogen removal. Nitrogen removal is extremely energy, uh, energy intensive, cost intensive. It, it also requires very, very big wastewater plants. Now, there is no way New York City can actually expand the footprint of its wastewater treatment plants because on one side there is water and on the other side there is residential real estate. So the challenge there is to achieve nitrogen removal down to very low levels but uh, using treatment plants which have been designed uh, decades ago. If you don't remove nitrogen then we are basically going to uh, result in a big dead zone in the Long Island Sound and Jamaica Bay like uh, what we have in the Gulf of Mexico where there's a, almost a permanent dead zone. There is nothing, there are no fish, you cannot uh, swim, you cannot, uh, it's not it cannot be used for recreational purposes. We cannot imagine having something like that in the Long Island Sound. Nitrous oxide from a greenhouse perspective is bad, blows a hole through the ozone layer to talk in very, very non-scientific terms. But the other thing is, if you have nitrous oxide coming out of a wastewater plant, it is a direct signal that the wastewater treatment plant is not doing well. So from that perspective, we can use nitrous oxide as a very good signal of a process upset. The, the problem is not only nitrous oxide, it has to be uh, looked at in terms of water quality as well. We cannot start penalizing wastewater treatment plants for emitting nitrous oxide because if they were to stop doing that, then the water quality would take a big hit. Uh, so it, it, that's where sustainability comes in. We have to strike a balance. Treat water, but, but, uh, but also manage your emissions. And uh, since the biggest plants contribute most to the water quality, uh, the, these are what uh, probably are going to get regulated in terms of monitoring. And again, this is where the protocol comes in. Now they can directly use our protocol and, and get consistent and uh, defensible numbers. From a global perspective, uh, Europe, well, parts of Western Europe and, the, and parts of the, United, uh, of, of the US, uh, they are already required to remove nitrogen. And that, that's good because, again, the, the most significant impact is on improved water quality and there might be some emissions, but if you are able to control them, then we have it solved. But now if we imagine the rest of the world where water quality is really not uh, regulated, we, we have huge dead zones, not only in the Gulf of Mexico, but surrounding a lot of developing countries. Uh, we have unregulated agricultural practice, really, really significant sources of nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, and, and methane. And uh, what we are doing is we are, we are coming up with nitrous oxide emission inventories all around the world. And we feed this, uh, we work with a group here right at Columbia, at NASA, GIS, and they take our emissions data and they feed it into a global climate model and thus they are able to uh, describe the impact of these emissions on global temperature. What we also provide them are different scenarios, different levels of wastewater treatment. For example, if India were suddenly to now regulate nitrogen removal and have it mandated, have, it, have everything go online within a year, how would that change the aqueous footprint but also the gaseous footprint? 
if China were to suddenly come online, what is the impact? This is what exactly that, that we are working with NASA guess on. From a drinking water perspective, from a wastewater perspective, this is probably one of the most exciting times, from, even from a fundamental science perspective. Even if we just ask the right question, that's all we have to do. That, that, that's uh, such a good position to be in today.